Okay, you've made it so far. Uh, you made it to week two, so that means that you know that you are, how much you have work to do, and you probably need to make a couple of changes to your schedule, right, to make sure that it works well. Take a look at your calendar at the beginning of the week and say to yourself, where am I going to fit this in? Now that I have a feel for how this class works, now that I uh, understand how to communicate with my instructor, where am I going to get this stuff done? Okay, so let's take a look at it. I'm in week two now. Um, you will, of course, be uh, completing business messages, which is chapter seven. I'm not going to go over your textbook. You can do that on your own and then take this quiz. Uh, make sure that you're using the 13th edition. A couple of questions about that. Um, all of that information is still in the syllabus, should you need it. Um, you'll be learning IEEE formatting, as promised. Um, there are two video uh, here for you. One is the formatting basics and the other is formatting the references page. So you're, that's what you're going to be needing to know for the memo that's due this week. Okay, You're going to be creating that feasibility memo. We're going to spend a little time talking about memo format here in a minute. Um, and again, reminding you that you have to post that by Tuesday. So hopefully you're watching this early in the week on Sunday or Monday. Um, and then you're having this this feasibility memo. It's a rough draft. You're posting it there by Tuesday. Um, and then you're taking a look at uh, these things. So what's the problem you've chosen to focus on from that PFW Writing Center webpage we discussed before? Um, what's the solution that you propose? Um, and the feasibility part, right? Based upon your research, usually on Google, you've taken a look at some other college in the world, uh, maybe one you want to transfer to, maybe one you transferred from, maybe one that is just of interest to you in some particular way, and taking a look at their writing center. What, are the, what does their writing center do? How do they do it better? Right? You find one that does, that fixes the problem in some way. Maybe that's uh, chat uh, interaction. Maybe it's got maps. Maybe it's got better pictures, videos. Who knows what it is that you've chosen to focus on. Um, but you can provide that example and say, look, I know this is a problem. Here's my solution for it. Here's why I know it's feasible, because I did some research out there. I found another college or even a business or a museum that fixes the problem. Here's what they did. And this is why I know it's feasible, because it's been done. Um, you're going to be including at a memo. This is a little unusual for a memo. Usually we don't see sources at the end of memos. But for this one, I want you to include uh, in IEEE format, so you'll have to go back up here and figure this IEEE format out. At the end of your memo, you're going to have at least two sources in IEEE format. One will be the source that is the Purdue Writing Center. The other one will be a source that is something else that you've taken a look at and are recommending. Um, you may have more than that as far uh, as sources, but at least two a minimum. Okay, so then by Friday, you're going to respond to everybody else in your group. Um, which is a limited number, and say, here is what I see, here are my recommendations for uh, the problem, the solution, the feasibility, the memo format, whatever it is you choose to focus on. Um, and then after that, so you will be then getting feedback from your peers, right? So you'll be taking a look at their feedback and going, okay, what did they suggest that I fix before I turn this in? Then the next step is you actually going through a rubric. So this is a rubric. You can print this out. You can uh, check it off. Basically, you're just filling this out for your own benefit. And here's all the things over here on the left-hand side that you want to make sure that your feed, that your that your memo does right. And you're then grading yourself. Am I beginning, developed, accomplished, or exemplary in these categories? So clearly shows one specific PFW Writing Center website issue. Am I beginning, developed? accomplished or exemplary. I want you to grade yourself and take a look at it and see. Uh, this gives you the opportunity to fix anything that, you're, that you notice before you turn it in, okay? So number two, uses clear memo format. You have block paragraphs. Um, we'll talk about that, but a reminder to you that business writing uses block paragraphs. That means that there are no indents, no paragraph indents, okay? Um, and Headings, you have clear headings. Can we follow the memo really quickly? I will, we'll, hold on, we'll talk about that more. Um, do you use bullet points? Those are often found in memos. Number three, includes visuals of the problem from a website or solution from another source. Um, if you, let me recommend uh, that you do a screenshot. So a screenshot, I will provide a link for you to show you how to do it, but a screenshot's pretty simple. It just takes a shot 
of whatever's on your screen, um, you can copy and paste this, an entire screenshot directly into um, into your memo. So you can have a little a little tiny thing that says, "Here, look, this is what they did. I can show you. Um, here's the problem. Look, I can show you." Okay. Includes at least two sources in IEEE format at the end, and that'll be on a, what it'll say references and then two sources. Shows evidence of using skills from the chapters that you read. So you have done the reading. Are you absorbing and utilizing those skills? Okay. And then the final thing, you'll submit that memo here. It'll be uh, somewhere in the range of one to two pages. Um, that means you have to be very concise uh, in, in your wording and your information. So let's take a look at a memo. This is the link that's provided. This is the Purdue OWL, which stands for Online Writing Lab. Um, this is parts of a memo, okay, so these things will kind of walk you through what does a memo look like. Notice at the top of a memo you always have a to, from, date, subject. These little uh, videos that pop up here actually will address this, the subjects we're talking about, so feel free to watch those videos also. Um, you'll usually have some sort of opening segment. Notice the block style I talked about. Remember the block style means no paragraph indents. Um, and that's the purpose of this memo. What's, you know, not only do we have a subject up here uh, to make it clear, but then we have this opening segment that kind of is a quick overview, kind of like this video, an overview of what's coming up. And then we see headings, right? Headings throughout that say, okay, now that we know the overview, here's the context, here's what we need to know about this. Um, here's, you know, maybe point number one, point number two, point number three, however you've decided to organize it. Um, these are just examples, right, of how they might look. Okay, now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to show you what y'all want to see is the sample memo. This is a sample memo. This is exactly what one might look like. Um, obviously, all memos are not the same and yours will be different too, depending on the type of subject that you've chosen. So yours will look a little bit different, but it will follow these same components. You know, we have bullet points here. We have clear headings. We have block style paragraphs. Um, and then at the end, these this has attachments and findings. This is their particular um, sources. Instead, yours will probably go onto the second page um, and will include a references page in IEEE format. You'll have at least two sources. Um, the other thing that's different about yours is that you'll probably have at least one or two visuals embedded in this memo to show us, look, this is the problem, here it is. Uh, here's the solution, here it is. Okay. Most of the time those are screenshots, they don't necessarily have to be, but that just makes it really simple and easy for you. Okay, so I will post a link for you about how to take a screenshot. It is really a matter of just finding the button on your, on your keyboard, clicking it, and then copying and pasting. It's really simple. So that's an overview of where we're at for week number two. See if we've hit everything. I think we have. Okay. Best of luck this week, and I will talk to you soon.